next on tap, we are fortunate to have with us tonight um, Richard Lear. And Richard is founder of five companies. He's a graduate of Brown University in economics and sometime health researcher. He published a landmark paper in 2016 on the growth of chronic disease in the U.S. His paper, The Root Cause and the Dramatic Rise of Chronic Disease, has now been read by nearly 4,000 scientists on ResearchGate. Richard's research points to an unrecognized health crisis that currently exists in the U.S. The diseases and chronic conditions are largely germless and without consensus on cures. In another paper, he identifies a new era of chronic disease, which affects more than 52% of the Americans, is growing fast. In this presentation, Richard connects environmental factors with the explosion of disease and chronic conditions. So, Richard, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And we'll be loosely setting a timer here, and I'll remind you when you have about two, three minutes remaining. So, thank you so much. Thanks, Christine, and thanks, Carla. You set me up for uh, half my presentation. And thanks to the other presenters and the, and the participants as well. So great event. And um, let's talk about chronic disease. I'm going to share my screen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about environmental stress and chronic disease. Uh, this is based on the research we did on our paper, looking at 190 uh, diseases, seeing which ones were going most quickly, seeing how large they were and then seeing what is really behind this incredible explosion of disease in America today. Here we are with the, the presentation. I'm, I'm gonna talk about chronic disease in the connection to environmental stress. And this was based on a few papers and some research that um, I worked on in the last three or four years. Um, let's go right in, because we've heard some of this. So in, the la in 20, 1990 to 2015, we found more than 36 diseases that had doubled, 20 had tripled, and 16 had quadrupled. This was after surveying 190 different chronic diseases. We're now seeing 170 million Americans affected by just one of these 36 diseases we found. The average American suffers from 2.1 chronic conditions just in this group. And the cost? nearly three trillion annually. That includes lost productivity and medical expense. This is mainly borne by the people who have the diseases, not the US government. Although 2.7 is about two thirds of the US budget annually. So you can see how big a problem this is every single year. So the question is, are we adding, are we entering a new era of disease? We're seeing all these disparate diseases, neurological conditions, auto-inflammatory, obesity is off the map, sleep. A lot of these conditions look to you like mental conditions, you know, depression, bipolar in children. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of things that look like that, but actually these diseases are neurological and you'll see why. During this research, we saw something really spectacular. It was an amazing discovery. We looked at environmental stress in plants. Now environmental stress in plants comes from heat, germs, toxins, drought, things like that. The plant senses the danger. It has receptors to do this. And then it sends a message to the cells. It sends this message with a calcium ion messenger. When it reaches the cells, something spectacular happens. There's a thing called an oxidative burst. Now what's that? That is where the free radicals come into the equation. Most of you have probably heard about free radicals. We eat blueberries and vitamin E, vitamin C, almonds, goji berries, we, we do this, we eat antioxidants because we're trying to stop these free radicals. Now, free radicals are good in the, case, in the way that they can attack germs. They are an attack force for the body. But when there's too many, and when the balance is out, they call it oxidative stress, then things happen, bad things happen. After the cell has the oxidative burst, another bit of calcium comes rushing out of the cell in two to 48 hours in plants 
they call that calcium efflux, and that's very toxic. So every time an environmental factor uh, affects the plant, lots of stuff happens, and it's not great. But guess what? This is also environmental stress in humans. So in this new era of disease, we see more than 91 million people with neurological diseases or impacts. The auto-inflammatory, that includes autoimmune and inflammatory diseases, is 209 million. And these are just in the 36 diseases we looked at. So I didn't include everything. I just looked at the fastest growing. Sleep insufficiency, over 100 million, and obesity, 110. So you can see the U.S. population is facing a complete crisis that we haven't heard about. We wanted to know what's in common. We found seven factors. The fastest growing disease share oxidative stress, which we talked about, free radicals. Inflammation, no big surprise. And then a thing called mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, why is that important? Well, the mitochondria exists in every cell in our body, and mitochondria is the energy center for those cells and for our, our bodies to operate, to run, to jump, to think, for our hearts, for our breathing. Everything we do depends on energy. They call it ATP. And this energy is produced by this very, very interesting Krebs cycle, and it's called the electron transport chain. But it gets disrupted. And when it gets disrupted, we lose our energy and fatigue and total inability to perform the functions of every aspect of our body takes place. We found more, but I'm not gonna go into all the details except for one big one. A single molecule is connected to all of these other six factors. It's called peroxynitrite. It's O-N-O-O, -O -O. that's the chemical, O-N-O. Oh, no. And um, the National Institutes of Health did a landmark paper on peroxynitrite and connected it with 60 diseases and more than 100 biological uh, impacts to the body. This was 2007. I spoke with Pal Patcher, the author of that paper, and I asked him, if I did a paper that said the peroxynitrite was the smoking gun or the root cause of chronic disease, would that be hyperbole? And in a second, he said, absolutely not. He basically had said it in his paper, but scientists are shy and they don't always you know, tell, tell people all the specifics. They got to stand back. So these seven factors end up acting like a system. It's important. They're synergistic. They work together. Oxidative stress will cause chronic inflammation. Well, chronic inflammation will cause mitochondrial dysfunction. They go back and forth. And so they start this vicious cycle. It's self-reinforcing cycle. So even if you've been exposed to an uh, environmental stress, and the stress goes away, this takes over. A new system starts acting, and this is why disease is chronic. So peroxynitrite, we talked about that. It's the heart. It connects with all six factors, and it's kind of the accelerator. Think of it as the accelerator. The system emerges from the science. This is not something that we created or I made up. This is what the science says. Every one of these factors is connected with all 36 diseases. And then it looks something like this. And don't get overwhelmed. But basically what happens is we have a dynamic biological system that is reinforcing and a vicious, creating vicious cycles that cause all this damage in the body. And this is happening to most all of us now to some degree. So what, is, what are the specific things that happen? You've probably heard of DNA damage. P factor causes DNA damage. P factor causes, it destroys proteins. It destroys healthy fats. Well, without proteins and healthy fats, it's hard to make stuff and it's hard to operate. Your cells need healthy fats for, to be hardy, to be strong. DNA damage is connected to uh, cancer and a variety of other diseases. And then, Back to Carla's presentation, it prevents dopamine and serotonin. Well, dopamine and serotonin are the two most important neurotransmitters to provide stability, uh, good feeling, the ability to kind of concentrate, to think. Without dopamine and serotonin, you become anxious, irritable, you lack compassion, 
You're unable to see other people's points of view. You can't experience uh, positive results. You can't experience like uh, the lust for life. These two uh, neurotransmitters define humanity and they are low in every autoimmune and every um, neurological disease and condition out there. These are two markers. P factor perforates the blood brain barrier, lets chemicals through into the brain and perforates the stomach, creates leaky gut. It interferes with cellular communication. So this is not cell phones, this is our cellular communications inside our body. And this is where our bodies know when to do what? When to process nutrients. Every cell is a minuscule uh, system of the human being itself. So everything that happens in our bodies happens in cells and it needs signals to know. It finally damages the immune system. No surprise we have all this auto-inflammatory disease and autoimmune disease going. All right, so what happens? Environmental stress triggers free radicals. We saw that in plants, we saw that in uh -huh. Free radicals then trigger inflammation of peroxynitrite. So you can see this, these two big factors coming across, creating biological chaos in the body, leads to chronic disease, and this is connected to the 36 fastest growing diseases that's now affecting more than half of us. This is the chain of causation. So what about these modern day stress symptoms everyone's talking about? Fatigue, anxiety, sleep issues, pain, mood swings. This is pretty normal. I work in Silicon Valley and I talk to people, uh, clients of mine and candidates of mine, and what they say is, I say, have you, do you experience any of these things? And when people look at them, they go, they say everyone but one. <laughs> and um, as you can see, mood swings, carb cravings, brain fog, and low sex drive. So 30 new stress symptoms have cropped up in the last 25, 30 years that are all connected with P-factor. 66 conditions, 36 diseases, 30 modern stress symptoms, we're blaming the kids, we're blaming finances, we're blaming the relationship, but these are actually caused by this internal biological chaos, and these are caused by environmental stress. Are they an early warning for P-factor? Well, here again, could this be a diagnostic for chronic disease, identifying this biological condition, and all these are measurable? They're expensive now, but this could be a $200 uh, uh, test at your doctor's. Am I in line for chronic disease? And if I have it, can I see improvements? So the body's response to environmental stress is creating a new disease, new kind of disease. What an irony. We're responding to our environment. We're trying to protect ourselves with oxidative stress and oxidative uh, reactive oxygen spe species. And now we're creating our own kind of disease. These are man-made diseases. There are no germs, there are no cures, and for many doctors, there's no answers. These are the diseases of civilization. A $3 trillion health crisis. Now, what's happening in the environment? What are the chief sus suspects here? First, sugar. We all know that sugar, high fructose diets, high fructose corn syrup is, is the worst. When I talked to Pal Patcher at NIH, he cited this as the number one cause for peroxynitrite. There's something else though going on, GMO enabled herbicide. This is Roundup. Roundup has been put into the US uh, crop supply starting in the late 90s in our corn and our wheat and our soy. Now, Roundup is something we use in our yard, but farmers are using it to increase the yield. So for 20 years, the American people who eat corn, wheat, and soy, if it's not organic, are consuming quantities of this thing called Roundup. It's really glyphosate, which is the chemical. The third one is electromagnetic radiation. Oh my gosh. Our society is built on electromagnetic radiation today. There's dirty electricity, which really results from the log jam of devices being plugged into your home and your buildings and your, your schools. This log jam creates aberrant frequencies. They're chaotic 
and they trigger uh, the immune system to start reacting. We'll go into more, more about that later. And the big one, of course, wireless radiation. So let's see, are they real? Has there been, first of all, there has to be growth in these. If there's no growth, they're not going to match the growth in disease. So let's see what happened. So sugar between 70 and 90 grew over a thousand percent. So where does that matter? Well, what happens is in 1990, when this study started, we were already consuming 10 or 11 times the amount of sugar that we had been previously. Roundup ready crops in the same time period, 3000% growth, no surprise. Electrical energy. So wireless radiation has gone up by over 6,000% if you look at the growth of cell towers and the growth of cell phones. Dirty electricity, we don't have actual stats, but we know that the amount of devices is now a, a billion devices in our homes in the US compared to maybe 30 million in 1990. All right, mechanism of environmental triggers. Unless we can find a mechanism, we really can't blame any one of these factors. Let's see what we find. Sugar, scientific consensus, it triggers free radicals and peroxynitrite. Hal Patrick confirmed this, there's hundreds of studies. So sugar is on the list. Roundup ready crops. Uh, many scientists are now doing studies, there are now multiple studies showing glyphosate, the active ingredient of Roundup, triggers free radicals and peroxynitrite. More work to be done there, but a very good trend and indication. Electrical energy, more than 250 studies. 127 connect wireless radiation with free radicals. 24 studies co uh, connect EMFs with peroxynitrite. Another 111 connect wireless to autonomic dysfunction, one of the seven biofactors of P factor. And then the Bioinitial report connect the chronic inflammation with EMFs. It looks like we've got three suspects and three real candidates for causing all this mischief. So here it is, environmental stress in humans. Where do we get it? Sugar, pesticides, electromagnetic fields, chemicals, heavy metals. A lot of places, it's things that are man-made. Environmental stress causes chronic disease. There is no question. Environmental stress is mostly man-made. We now see 170 million Americans suffering from man-made diseases. These are the diseases we created. Thank you. Richard, thank you. Excellent. Strong as always. You're just an amazing wealth of information. Thank you so much.